Hello everybody, welcome back to Financial Trading Basics Part 10, Sentiment and Bias. Uh, one of the beginning episodes of this uh, series I talked about just the, the sentiment and mood around Bitcoin being pretty crazy, or as crazy as I've ever seen. Um, in this episode we're just going to talk about a good amount about Bitcoin and more on just sentiment and bias in trading, how it manifests itself, different examples of that, and just different thoughts and ideas I have about the um, economy. But the core value proposition of Bitcoin and its uniqueness or lack thereof. Um, again, I keep seeing, it's just amazing to me to see other money managers using the same two arguments for or against Bitcoin. It's either a store of value of, again, a store of value like gold, um, or it, it, again, again, that might be the only analogy I hear people use. But the core, the core value proposition of Bitcoin is sending money for small amounts of fees instantaneously um, for, for big businesses. But the, the appreciation and depreciation cycles for Bitcoin are well defined because of the supply and demand. But it's not really unique in the sense that it manifests some different sentiment uh, profile for its appreciation and depreciation cycles. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about that in general. Um, the appropriate use of the words crash, plunge, bubble, capitulation. Um, like for Bitcoin specifically, you know, it's up, I don't know, 2020 was up 300%, since 2019 is up 1,000%. And because Bitcoin is just this spotlighted people looking at it for whatever reason, they'll start using words like crash and plunge when Bitcoin goes down, or any financial asset goes down 5%, 6%, 7%, 20%, 10%. So what percentage defines a correction, or a crash, or a plunge? Um, and, and I don't know. Um, I, don't think, I don't think defining a correction as a 10% pullback or 10% depreciation is a definition of a crash I, or a correction. I don't think either really matter. Um, Bubble and capitulation, same thing. It's just I'm just gonna. We'll be going through examples. The second part of this video, I'll just be going through examples. Um, people talking about investing, um, but it's my my point is people use these terms very sloppily, very messy, and it's just it's a result of sentiment and bias. Market mechanics for appreciation and depreciation cycles. This is what I was saying is it's not any different for Bitcoin in terms of. Um, you, you ramp up, you have a lot of hype. I just Google sentiment, market sentiment chart. Um, I'm kind of sitting in front of you, you can't really see it. I have it drawn up here, but it's just when someone enters an investment, they have optimism. Price starts to go up, they get excited. It goes up more, they get thrilled. They, at the very top, they're in euphoria. Then the price comes down a little bit, they have anxiety, it comes down more, they're in denial. It gets almost back to their buy-in price, they're in fear. Um, goes below their buy-in price, now they're in desperation. Um, then the asset goes into free fall, and that's the proper use of capitulation. I've seen people use capitulation for appreciation, incorrect. Then at the bottom is despondency, it starts coming back up. You have depression, then hope, then relief, and then optimism again once your price point gets back to um, your buy-in price. And my simple point is, this is true. This will happen. Um, so I Google it. My camera's kind of out of the screen. I don't want to, I want to be able to, be able to see me. <laughs> um, but, and, and, and you'll, this is completely normal for just being a human being and watching a asset. This is why you shouldn't want, look at your, if you don't have good discipline, this is why you shouldn't look at price points all of the time every day. You can, but it's not going to change the fundamental reason as to why something's appreciating or depreciating. Right? For Bitcoin, when I people see people talking about bubbles for the asset with no time frame, it's like, well, how long can a bubble last? What, what, what defines a bubble? Um, 
for Bitcoin specifically, it is the thing the thing that could make Bitcoin not be a thing anymore is if somehow you could create a central or a, a decentralized or centralized, I really personally don't think it matters that much, but if you could create a virtual currency that has that has market adoption, people would use it. Um, and then, oh yeah, that's right, you're right back to Bitcoin. Um, so the fundamental reason of Bitcoin is, is solidified already in the, the financial economy right now today. Um, and I've got to cover that in my Bitcoin specific video. Um, but the correlation of assets and liabilities, I don't have a lot. Are assets correlated? Sometimes. Are assets not and liabilities? Like what? What's the what's the relation of unemployment to consumer spending to, you know, f multiples on open market companies? You know, why does why do companies typically trade at forward earnings and not at cash flow or something like that? All of those are a result of sentiment. I'll probably do a different video on correlation of assets and liabilities, but personally, I don't have any very good opinions. Um, all technic technical analysis is trailing indication. Everyone who's kind of looked at stocks for any real time knows that. Um, but the three, the three things I wanted to talk about of how sentiment and bias manifests itself is seller's remorse. You sell something, right? You're up over here at the optimism. You get excited. Now you're at the thrill phase. You sell your asset, and then it appreciates another 30, 40, 150 percent. And now you're like, well, shit. Why did I do that? Buyer's remorse, literally the opposite. You buy something, it starts going down in value, or you just don't want it, or you're pressured at the store, whatever. You're like, why did I buy this? Investment bias simply is just whether you're in science research, whether you're in stock trading, whether you're going fishing, I don't know. If you spend your time doing something, you expect it or you think it's going to work out more likely so because you spent your time doing so. Um, in those, and this is like when people fall in love, like specifically Bitcoin, I have a sizable position in Bitcoin. My other parts of my financial life are going, I don't, if Bitcoin makes me 10K or 10 million, I do not care. Um, not in any real way. And that doesn't affect my, my, my financial status at all. Um, but people with, again, people might view me, I'm a Bitcoin bull because of its fundamental proposition. I have no investment bias for basically anything. Like I said, I don't think like, you can take bitcoins up a thousand percent in two years. Go Google the top stock returning options on a daily basis. You'll see four or five hundred percent winners, five to ten of them a day on the options contracts. You'll find equity con uh, equity stocks. Tesla this year appreciates eight hundred percent in a year. So I, I do think Bitcoin has the spotlight in the sense that it's like this crazy new thing, and then people will call it a bubble, or a crash, or a plunge, or a capitulation way more readily than it is appropriate, right? I mean, I have been personally watching the, the price uh, price action on Bitcoin, I mean, for basically since as long as I've held the asset. Um, I, like I said, I don't care, I don't care about the, the return. I, I more so like to execute the trade and watch the market dynamics. Certainly, I, the money's fun, but again, my money comes will come from other places. Um, but watching watching Bitcoin trade healthy above twenty thousand. I mean, from twenty thousand to forty thousand, it's it's get and does not gapped on anything. It has cycle like like traded at every 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 thousandth marker going up from twenty thousand to forty thousand. So when people talk about like crazy crazy appreciation like as Bitcoin as opposed to Tesla or as Tesla as opposed to some other thing in the market into the um, in, in the in, in the marketplace it is just because more people are looking at it but these types of volatility that is in every financial asset that I have literally basically ever looked at um, so now let's jump into some of the examples so now what I'm doing is I'm just taking, I'm not going to use people's names, but I'm just taking, these are actual, this, the one, this example that I'm about to do is just a, an actual financial manager, um, been managing money for 18 years. I'm going to go through his argument about Bitcoin, um, and you get just all the things we've been talking about and just show you what, what I'm saying and, and whatnot. Um, again, like I said, I have no, no person, like I'm a 
bull on Bitcoin's fundamental, but again, I don't. I have no investment bias. I don't. I don't really care that much. Um, but he says he's responding to. I don't know how to say this guy's name. Pali Hapitia. Pali Pali Hapitia. I don't know. A well-known investor guy that's on CNBC all of the time that recently had a clip saying about Bitcoin going to 100k, then 150k, then 200k. And this guy on LinkedIn says, there are two different, there are two things wrong with Pali Haptia's argument. Bitcoin is not an uncorrelated asset. Nobody, nobody in economy can, can validly say what's correlated or what's uncorrelated. Way, way, way too big of a question for me to answer. Uh, that, that doesn't, where, where's this guy's credentials to say that? Bitcoin is positively correlated with the stock market because it is primarily, primarily an animal spirits speculative vehicle. If I had an investment officer use that terminology, I would immediately move all of my money out of their account. What, what does that mean? Bitcoin is a positively correlated with the stock market because it is, a, it is primarily an animal spirits speculative vehicle. <laughs> no idea. Do you really think it, it's, it's a coincidence that Bitcoin and Tesla are going through the roof at the same time? Could be. Very well could be. But again, sentiment at the general level, market appreciations, everything's going more likely to appreciate. Um, so is it a coincidence? No. Is it direct correlation? No. Weird. Weird. <laughs> Point number two. It is a non-sequitur? That word salad, it is not a sequitur to say a useless string of software code is a hedge against loss of faith in our political leadership. Saying Bitcoin's a hedge against, again, like societal unrest or print, even printing of money. Societal unrest is way more a uh, bigger thing than, like, societally than, than printing more money. Like, you can have inflation without, like, civil wars. <laughs> but to say, like, Bitcoin is, like, the reason to buy Bitcoin is a hedge against, like, the world exploding, just fundamentally, economically non nonsensical. This is why it got slammed along with stocks in February and March. When the stuff really hits the fan, trading Bitcoin on his smartphone, oh, well, I missed the line, it says, if anything, given point one, Bitcoin is at risk to break down, is is a, at risk to a breakdown in societal stability. Not relevant at all, horrible analysis, just nonsense. Um, but when the stuff really hits the fan, trading Bitcoin on his smartphone won't be high on Joe Yolo's to-do list. My take on Pali Haptia's law has long-term been that he is a tech guy during a tech bull market and as such his success should be significantly discounted. No. <laughs> Success in investing does not change the merits or non-merits of a fundamental argument. Um, don't know much about pa Pali Haptia's, so again, I have no opinions on either of these people. I'm just assessing the, the logical merits of what they're saying, and it's nonsense. Um, he hasn't gone through a full market cycle, so let's see what happens when the music changes before we anoint him as an investment genius. Nobody is an, invest an investment genius. does not exist. Um, there was another post from the same... Same guy. Yeah, I want to read this one because it just has more. Speculative manias are a virus of the mind. Much like a virus, they are transmitted between individuals via vectors, but rather than bodily fluids and blah, blah, blah. The current idea transmitting, idea in quotations, don't know why, the current idea transmitting Bitcoin mania is that Bitcoin will replace gold as a store of value and protect you against the money being printed. Whether or not this actually makes any sense is besides the point. Um, it's, it's not besides the point, but it's a valid point that no one can answer. Most people who buy and own Bitcoin couldn't even pass remedial economics. Completely false. Any money manager who couldn't look at Bitcoin in 2010, 12, 13, 15 and say, hey man, I'm going to throw 100k at this, 50k, 1000 bucks is financially, it, it wouldn't pass an economics class. Alice, Alec, if, if big, when, when, when virtual currencies are the foundation of, of our monetary system, which is already basically here, the, 
in retrospect, that it's like, like I said, it's a once and for all thing of going from secure commodity based backed uh, uh, currencies to just uh, virtual currencies in general. But so we've already done that. We did that in like 1930. So, so what was what was the what was the argument? Couldn't even pass remediable economics. Oh, my point was again, if you can't look at Bitcoin, again, it didn't have to be called Bitcoin, it could have been any sort of this, and not allocate some sort of money to it, that is demonstrable incompetence in the economic allocation of finance. Facts. All that matters is that it is easily packaged, transmitted, and consumed, which it is. As more Joes are infected, the price of Bitcoin spirals higher. Spiral means down. Again, just the wrong use of appreciation and depreciation. The, bit, the price of Bitcoin spiral is higher, bringing in more Joes who buy into the idea, and so forth and so on. I see this all of the time, basically calling Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme. And then they, they say it requires somebody else to buy it. Everything that you sell at any point in time's value is derived from what somebody will pay for it. So again, they just spew out the same argument for anything and say, here's why the world's going to crash and burn. Here's why this thing won't work. Um, again, like I said, I'm not... Bitcoin could go to zero, it could have gone to zero when I first invested, don't care at all. Um, like a pandemic, however, the mania reaches a culminating point where all these people susceptible to infection become infected and a supply of available suckers to further inflate the bubble dries up. At that point, the bubble will collapse, blah, 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 and then they're using like, herd immunity for Bitcoin. Again, this is a money manager. My, my point isn't, I didn't use the guy's name, I don't... They're not trying to put this guy on blast. You just some guy I see on LinkedIn that other people comment on. But he's a money manager demonstrating sentiment and, and bias in the worst way possible. And uh, that might be all the... If I had to rate him, like I said, what he... I would say he has investment bias against Bitcoin. Um, he spent his time, like I said, there's a lot of people, it's just the spotlights, the, the appreciation and depreciation of a thousand percent happens all the time in financial markets. So just somebody who wants to take a side, wants to sound smarter in the future, and fundamentally misses every bit of the, the actual value proposition as a value manager. Now I'm going to go through an example of a retail investor demonstrating uh, I, what, I, what I think is seller's remorse. And so I was going. I was going to do an example about seller's remorse, um, but the the Reddit post got deleted. There was just two. Well, there's one. Uh, just about the, t the title was "I just sold all of my 21 Bitcoin, no regrets." And like I said, it would have way way more poignant if I could have read the post. But just basically, some someone selling at around I don't know 31 or 32 thousand, and just saying they have no regrets. But, but clearly in the post, you can see them like mirroring the sentiment at large. And like I said, this is true. The sentiment pattern more or less is true. <laughs> and so for the new trader, for someone trying to learn to trade, be aware of this. You're going to feel that. And if you want to have a big win, you're going to have to hold the asset or hold the asset or short the asset through, through these cycles. Um, and really, I really wish that post would have still been up as a great example. But you'll see it all the time on StockTwits. I mean, StockTwits is just a, an app website that just has whatever, whatever uh, stocks or assets are trending on the day. And they like said, just go through them. I'll just, I'll just go through now. But it's always like the people who are bullish, bullish and bearish, they're always mocking each other. And like I said in my language series, they're always saying about who's the stupider person. So it's always the people that are in excitement, optimism, thrill, and euphoria are making fun of the other people because it's like, oh, look, you're so stupid, you didn't buy this thing. Um, and then it just flips when the price action changes. But overall, like I said, I really wish I could have read that example. But the, the first example I just read about the market manager and then the retail investor both of them kind of kind of fail fail to understand the fundamental value proposition of Bitcoin or virtual currency. Um, more so concerning for the money manager, not really the retail investor. But 
those are, those are my thoughts on sentiment and bias. And the thing I wanted to say about sentiment is there, there's one sentiment for the asset. This is kind of a broader point. But the, the money manager's posts are a reaction to most of the bullish people. And he, like I said, he's got, he's got to get his words in or he's got to say why it's wrong, even if the argument's terrible. This is what people do. Um, so be aware of this when you're going into trading um, and experience it. Like I said, there's no, don't, don't paper trade. Just take a little bit of money and experience these things. Um, yeah, thanks for watching Financial Trading Basics Part 10, Sentiment and Bias.